Hey everyone, so it is another Doctor Who day today, which is always very exciting. This is of course the second episode of the seventh series, Dinosaurs on a Spaceship, which is just mega exciting. You know, Doctor Who, dinosaurs, what can go wrong? Um, but before I get in with this, I just want to say, BBC iPlayer people, please stop putting your episodes on on HD. My laptop can't take it. I had a nightmare trying to watch this on iPlayer. Um, but yeah, as usual, I will go through this in chronological order. If I miss anything out, I do apologise. Um, not as much this week to go through as the last week. I think that's kind of inevitable considering last week was the, the opening episode of the series, so there was going to be a lot more, a lot more excitement. Um, but first of all, well, second of all, really, the music in these first two episodes, incredible. As much as I'm, my favourite music comes from series two. I think Series 7's music is starting to top everything else. It's just so exciting and really emotive and I really like that quite a lot. Um, okay, so the fact that we have dinosaurs, robots, Silurian, Queen Nevertiti, by the way, if I call her Nevertiti in this, forgive me, when I studied her very briefly when I did Egyptian history, we did call her Nevertiti. Uh, I don't know if that was just my teacher's preference or whatever. Um, so, you know, if I say Nevertiti, forgive me, but I'll try not to. So you've got a massive package. The fact that it was a Silurian arc, I think, is quite exciting. I love the episodes when all these different creatures come together. And although it wasn't in such a great extent here, you know, we didn't have loads of different creatures. However, if we'd been at the beginning of the spaceship, there would have been, of course. So that I love. Um, the next thing, okay, the next thing I wrote down, and to be honest, is the last point regarding the actual episode itself. Um, is the level of innuendos in this. We're starting to really... There are a couple of episodes where there are a lot of innuendos, but Doctor Who is a family show. They can't really go overboard with them, but the, in this episode, they kind of did. Most of them were discreet, but the, the one where Brian said, only my balls, I, I just sort of stopped and went, this was pre-Watershed, wasn't it? Where are you taking this? And honestly, I genuinely thought he meant his balls, as in his balls, you know? I didn't think it was an innuendo, I just thought he was being outright kind of inappropriate for the kids. And then when he produced golf balls I thought that is just weird. But it was very very funny and I do like that and it kind of gives us an indication of what post watershed Doctor Who might be like. And if somebody would like to, you know, create that, please do. That would be absolutely hilarious. Um, yeah, so that's basically all I wrote down. The plot is very odd. I wasn't actually hooked into the plot itself until about two thirds of the way through and then you know when I started to think actually how are they going to get out of this. The first two thirds was kind of me just getting excited about the fact that we had robots and the voices of the robots which I'll get to in a moment and the dinosaurs and the Silurian and the Egyptian element there. The plot itself I didn't think was that intense for the most part. But towards the end it got quite exciting and I did get sucked into the actual how are we going to get out of this situation. So it, it worked really, really well, and I do like those episodes where we're not completely sucked into the plot and we can just admire the beauty of Doctor Who. This, for me, is exactly what Doctor Who should be like, you know, a, a, an abundance of, 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 of normal creatures, if you like, or historical figures. Um, yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. The fact that Brian went in the TARDIS was very interesting. Um, also, I'd completely forgot Rory was a nurse. Completely forgot that. Um, yeah, having Brian in the TARDIS was great. Just that little hint at the end that he went on his went on his travels. He went travelling with the Doctor for a bit was absolutely amazing. Having him sitting on the edge of the TARDIS with his flask and his, I think, might have been sandwiches was just so beautiful. And it's moments like that which are really lovely. His character kind of reminds me of the character of Wilf. Um, don't know if that was intended or if that's just me being odd, but that's kind of what I got from that. Um, the fact when the Doctor called him Brian Pond. It didn't even register in my head that he wasn't a pond until Brian said, I'm not a pond in the doctor's life. Of course you are. It just It's just inevitable that anybody who's connected with the ponds is going to be a pond. I love how they are called the ponds and not the Williams, despite the fact that they're married. Um, I just love that. And it's the ponds has become almost at the core of the TARDIS for a lot of the adventures. And it's going to be very odd when we don't have them. You know, we've lost companions before, but never has the name if a companion meant so much, and I know that some people argue against that, and I don't mean that in the way that it sounds, but hopefully you'll know what I mean. In terms of the script, saying pond means something quite significant, and it's, it's very special. This episode also reminded me kind of series three, series four style, um, which I like because that's the episode that I can totally separate from my Doctor Who addiction, which was series two, uh, series one and two. 
So I, I like that. It's we're kind of getting away from the the main focus of the whole River Song thing. Thankfully, thankfully we have left most of that behind for now, so that's quite nice. As much as I loved it, I, I did hope it wasn't going to carry through to this. Um, yes, and the last point before I get excited about next week, the cast in this is brilliant. Obviously, Mark Williams as Brian. I looked at him and I was like, it's Arthur Weasley. Oh my goodness! Um, appropriately, I am wearing a, a Harry Potter t-shirt for this. That wasn't planned, actually. Um, so that's really exciting to have Arthur Weasley, you know, Mark Williams in this. Also, it took me about five minutes to work out the voice of the robots. I was sitting going, I know your voice. Who are you? David Mitchell and Robert Webb. Oh my goodness, that's fantastic. Most of you will know if you subscribe to me and watch my videos regularly that I'm a huge fan of David Mitchell and of course I do like Robert Webb as well because you kind of don't get one without the other that frequently. So I love David Mitchell. So to have David Mitchell in a Doctor Who episode was just... Ah, that is so fantastic. So I really did love that. Everything about this episode is perfect. It just... Because it is a standalone episode with, I assume, no connection to any other episode as it stands, loved it every second of it. Even though the plot wasn't necessarily that intense to begin with, the elements outside of that just created this really gorgeous package. Really did like it. Um, next week, Wild West, Cyborgs, what is going on? That looks like that might be another standalone episode, which I'm hoping we get a lot of, because obviously the finale of this se well, actually the Pons episode might be quite... Uh, intense and obviously we have the 50th next year really excited really cannot wait to see what else is in store looking forward to next week and um, please do let me know your thoughts on dinosaurs on a spaceship i've heard a few people on twitter and that i did try and avoid spoilers and things but people had tweeted things saying they didn't enjoy it as much as they thought they were going to or they didn't enjoy it as much as the episode previous i will be honest i do prefer um asylum with the daleks but it's the daleks you know um but i really did like this episode Please feel free to leave comments and things and I'll see you all next time. Bye!